You talked earlier about your the death of your brother, Sebastian. The first time I went to Dubai, I went to the gym there. And there was a, a young guy there that came over and offered to train me. And he trained me for about, I think, two weeks individually. That was your brother. Got loads of photos, hundreds and hundreds of photos of him training me on the bags there. I remember him as being just the most generous, pure, pure is the word that I always come back to, giving person. He didn't ask me for any money. He never asked me for a thing. He trained me on the bags both times that I came to um, to buy. And I wasn't, he didn't necessarily know, know who I was or what I was doing, but he did that out of the goodness of his heart. And then he continued to message me and speak to me on Instagram about superfoods. And we talked a lot about that. Obviously he, there was a tragic accident and he passed away from that. What can you tell me about that incident and the, the lasting impact that's had on you and those, those around you? I mean, you know, this is fresh. This is, this only happened a year ago. Um, and I never had to, I've never dealt with anything like that in my life. Um, I told you I'm not an emotional guy. Uh, the last time I cried, I said I was 12 years old. But the day I found out, I cried the whole day. I cried the whole day. I cried for like two days straight. Um, yeah, yeah. My so my dad actually. I had COVID. I had COVID when I found out. My dad came to my house. Uh, he woke me up. He said, "Come outside." And I thought I'd done something wrong because he had he had a look in his face which was. Uh, I don't know, I, I just couldn't, I can't describe it, but it was, I knew something was wrong. Um, so I thought that, you know, I don't know, I I, don't, I, I wasn't sure what, what, what I was about to hear. He took me outside, my little brother, my little brother Joseph, um, he's, he lives with me and I have an outhouse. Uh, so he lives there, he went and got him and he sat us down and he told us and, um, yeah, I just started crying, man. It was, you know, one of the worst days of my life. And, um, you know, it's just, it's so crazy to to think that somebody that is so healthy, you know, like you said, he's telling you about the superfoods and, you know, he trains every day, you know, peak physical condition, um, can just, you know, have a heart attack and just, just gone. St still just blows my mind, you know. Um, I thank God that, you know, he didn't suffer. He didn't. He didn't really feel anything. He just went. Um, and I also thank God that he had a son. Uh, his son was born, maybe a month or month before he passed, um, and he Raheem, and he looks just like him. So, we have that. You know, um, we have Raheem to carry on his legacy. And I thank God for that every day. Um, you know, he's just now starting to walk, learning how to walk. He has uh, seven or eight teeth. He's a, he's a great kid, very good looking kid. Um, I guess that one instance, I, I feel like that has made me more of an emotional person since that's happened. Um, it makes you think just like how before something like that happens to you, you hear about all that stuff on your news and to other people and you see it in movies and it's just like, no, well, whatever, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really register. But when there's a death in your family, then, then the next time you hear about someone passing away, then you get that immediate feeling of what you dealt with. And then you start to sympathize and empathize and with the people that it's happening to that you don't know. Um, and I never had that emotion before until until this happened. Um, and it just, you know, like I said, I had COVID and 
that meant that I actually couldn't make it to his his funeral, which is, you know, it's just crazy. Like I was in Florida for the whole of COVID, right? And when I say that these guys didn't care in Florida, like the beaches were full. No one's wearing masks. I, I, I remember going to the beach and I would walk along the beach, thousands of people and I'd be wearing a mask. This was like peak COVID. And people would be looking at me like, what are you wearing a mask for? Like they did not care. I was in, I went to Texas. I was in Dallas for a month. I was partying every night. Never got COVID. And then the day my brother dies, I have COVID and I can't get on a plane and fly to Dubai for his funeral because I have COVID. And in the Muslim religion, they have to bury him as quickly as possible. Um, they couldn't wait. I thank God that my family were able to go out. I had to stay. Um, you know, I don't, I don't believe in regrets. Um, I believe what's meant, you know, what's meant to be will be. And, you know, you, sh you should be happy with whatever happens in your life, you know, but I would say there is one regret I have in my life. Uh, and that was, uh, I actually went, so I hadn't, I hadn't seen my brother for quite some time. And uh, I was, I had a holiday. This was, I don't know, maybe three or four months before he passed away. I stopped off, I had to stop off in Dubai and I stopped off in Dubai for like a couple of days before I flew to this destination. And um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to see anybody. I, nobody knew that I was making this trip. I knew my brother was in Dubai and I didn't go and see him. I just, I didn't want people knowing I was in Dubai. So I just, I stayed in my hotel room and I didn't see anybody. And then I left and I went to the next destination. That's, that's probably the one regret I have in my life now is that I didn't go and see him, you know, cause that would have, that would have been the last time I would have saw him before he passed. Um, you know, and these things, it just teaches you, you've got to appreciate, you've got to, um, you know, you don't take anything for granted. Nothing is guaranteed. You know, the people you love, be with them as much as you can, appreciate them, enjoy them. Don't get into fights, you know, don't do things which are just wasting time because one minute they're there and one minute they're gone. And then you've got to think about all the things you could have done with them or should have done with them that you didn't because, you know, you're, you're too busy or you, you know, oh, I'll see them again another time. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy how the world works, but yeah, appreciate everyone at all times. And, you know, family is, family is number one, you know, don't let anything ever get in between that. Don't take it for granted. That's one thing I've learned. You know, investing a lot of time in your relationship with Raheem? Absolutely. Yeah, we're on the phone all the time. I've got a million videos of him on my phone. My 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 uh, my brother's wife, Seb's wife, Salma, she sends me videos every day of Raheem. Um, they're coming over to England actually in a, in a month or so. And yeah, so Raheem is is now my son, you know, that's that's how I feel. Um, you know, it actually makes me want to have a kid. I was never really planning on having a kid until after my career, and I still may not. But um, I want Raheem to be able to grow up with my son, you know? I don't want them to be too far apart um, you know, me and my brother Seb, we were, you know, a year and a half apart. So we were very close, you know, we did everything together. Um, so I want, I want Raheem to have that. So, you know, within the next few years, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh -huh.